Hey friends, it's Matt from Cornelius Creations. Welcome back. I am super excited to bring you along on another wood carving video. Now, if you are an advanced wood carver or just starting out, that's all right. You're gonna learn a lot in this video. So if you guys are ready, we are going to get started. Let's go. So I'm super excited to try out this new Dremel 40 Flex unit. Now if you notice, this is quite a bit bigger than your traditional Dremels, meaning that it has a lot more horsepower. Now this comes with a removable handpiece and a foot pedal, which is really nice. You can just step on the gas there and make it go faster. Compared to a traditional Dremel right here, you can see it's just a little bit bigger. Now these do have removable hand pieces right here that way you can put another one on there and it just snaps back on i'm going to be carving the image from this template right here and if you guys would like to follow along with me which will be super fun you can pick it up in the link below it comes with an instructional video that way you will know how to adjust the size of it to however big or small you want and how to print it out so you guys may want to go pick that up if you would like to follow along with me in the video so before we start carving, we need to make sure that we have a few practical things. Now, I will tell you guys, please listen to me. Your health is the most important thing. So here's what we need. A pair of safety glasses. Now, you guys probably heard me ramble on about this before. You need some fog-proof ones, okay? Make sure you have fog-proof glasses. Here's a pair I picked up on Amazon. I will list all these tools below. The next thing we need is a dust mask. Now this one right here, I get made fun of a lot for this one. I mean, it does look pretty weird, right? I posted this on social media the other day and I had all kinds of people laughing and making fun of me, but it's all right. It's really comfortable and you don't have to worry with it just scratching your face. It stays on your face pretty good, which is nice. Okay, the third thing we need is some carbon paper now this is an old school way of doing this this is my way there's obviously a few different ways but i like just using carbon paper and transfer of paper so you guys want to make sure you have some of that and the last thing we need of course is some wood to wood carve you guys know i'm a huge fan of these little bass wood boxes right here now what we're going to do we are going to put a stencil across here and wood carve it and you can see it just opens up right here now listen to me these make fantastic gifts. Don't underestimate the value that you guys have when you do something creative like this and give these as gifts. People absolutely love them. Okay, and the last thing we need, of course, is our stencil. This says wipe your paws. I had a friend make this for me right here. Now what we're gonna do is stencil this right to the box. Okay, now we have our box and the stencil. So I'm just gonna take this right here trim the sides of it up. So now we are going to take our carbon paper and I'll line it up just like that. And I am going to just cut this out. There we go. Now we want to take our tape right here, fold it on all four sides, making sure you have all the wrinkles out. Looky there. Let's see if we can get this straight right here. Put a little weight on there. Make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And tape this sucker down. There we go. Now the fun part, we get to trace all of this right here. Okay, are you ready? Let's look here. Oh yeah, good deal. That is looking good. I missed a few areas, but that's all right because I'm just gonna take my pencil and fill them in. There we go. I'm using three main burrs right here. The first one is a Duragrit cutting wheel burr, which is also a flathead burr. I'm using this to do the initial cuts inside the letters. The second one is a round carbide cutter burr, and this is for the detail areas. And the third one is an inverted cone burr, and this is gonna help me in the detail areas as well. 
and also to just smooth everything up. So before we start carving, we're gonna change the burr in here. So what we wanna do is take this chuck key that came provided, stick right in there, and the gear's right there grab, and we're just gonna loosen up just like that. And that's gonna allow the burr to come out of there. The burr I'm inserting here is the first one that we are going to use. It is the Duragrit Cutting Wheel SRCW2. It is more of a flathead style burr. Now what we want to do is turn this on the side and use the sides of it to actually carve in the wood. Now this is a regular 2D carving. So we're just going to take the side of this wheel right here and get in all the areas that's penciled in. And we're just going to take our time and go through here nice and slow and smooth everything out, making everything look as nice as we can. Okay guys, I'm just taking it easy around the edges right here very lightly. And when I go around the corner, I'm kind of turning as I go just like this. And I'm carving just very lightly through there. I'm going to continue carving the letters here. Now one thing you want to watch out for is that if you are heavy handed, you are going to have inconsistent levels of depth. So really take your time with this and let the bird do the work for you. For the most part, you just want to glide your hand along and let everything just carve out for you. And that's looking pretty good right there. The next thing, I'm going to take my little small burr in right here and just go around and get some of the detail areas of the bear. And also inside the paw prints right here. If you aren't careful, a small round carbide burr like this will cause a lot of nasty cuts. So just take your time with it. I'm getting inside the paw prints right here, then I'm going to go around the edge of the bear and basically any place that needs some detail carving in. And from this step, I'm going to go back to my cutter burr, which is the flathead burr, and just kind of get inside and shape everything out nice. Okay, that's looking pretty good for the most part. I've just been using this flathead burr right here and the round carbide burr. Now I am going to do the claws right quick. As you can see, this is looking pretty messy. What I want to do right here is to take a piece of sandpaper. After I got everything generally carved, and what we're going to do is just wipe. This will help take our pencil marks off too. And that's what this sandpaper does. It gets all your lines, takes off the jagged edges. So now we want to take a nylon brush or a hard bristled paintbrush and just get all that stuff out of there. This is looking pretty good so far. So now we want to clean up the dirty areas where the bear and paw prints are. For this part, I am using the Dremel Stylo with an inverted cone head burr. Now what you wanna do is just flip the Dremel up on its nose and use the end of that burr there to really clean up any dirty areas you see. This helps to maintain depth and to make everything level and clean. To clean everything up, I am going to go over this one more time, very lightly, just to see if I missed anything and to clean everything up. Okay, this is starting to look pretty nice. Now there's still some messy areas inside of the names here and where the bear is at, so I'm just going to hit that with some sandpaper. So this is where the tedious work comes in.
So I have to show you guys something. I completely messed this project all up. You see that bear right there? Oh my gosh, that looks horrible. I completely messed this up, but it's all right. I went and got a new box. Um, and it's their last one and the lid is broke on it, but that's all right. I'm gonna make it work. This was their last piece they had. So I had to stop filming and go and get another one. As simple as this is and stuff, out of all the hours I have in carving, sometimes I still mess up and you know what? That's okay. We are going to make mistakes. I was gonna try to make this work, but it, it's not working out for me. Not working out for me whatsoever. We are going to redo this and it's just gonna be like this one and I'm gonna pick up where I left off with this one at and see what we can't do, okay? And here we are. And like I said, this is my second box. This one right here, I messed up pretty bad right there where the bear is at in the O. So um, there was no recovering from that. So I just went ahead and just redid everything on here. So I think that's turning out really good. Now before we stain, something I personally like doing, I want to show you guys, is torching the wood. I'm using a Dremel torch right here, and what I'm gonna do is just lightly scorch the wood. This is gonna help bring out the grain of the wood. Now, since this is basswood, it doesn't have a lot of strong grain structure, but that's all right. I'm gonna do just a little bit and then just enough to add this rustic vibe to it. So be careful while you're doing this. I'm gonna get the sides of it. Just go along the edges here. For the next part, we are going to stain this. I'm using Minwax Red Oak right here. I really like this color. Now, you wanna take something and stir the stain with for the next part because it has sediment in the bottom and when you stir it, that sediment comes to the top. Now for this part, since I have some negative recess in there, I am gonna be using a brush for this. I'm gonna use a brush and use this shop towel right here to wipe the excess off. So what we want to do is prime our brush. When I say prime, I just mean dip it and just kind of wipe the sides and get the br bristle, the bristles really wet. And there we go. Now let's just put it on. Oh yeah, one more thing. Where's my glasses? Where are your glasses for this? We're just gonna get it all in there like that. The longer you leave the stain on, the darker it's gonna get. And I just lathered that on there good. So now I'm just gonna take a towel right here, make sure it's lint free, and just wipe it off. Wow, that is looking amazing. I, I love that right there. See that? This is gonna look really good once we put some urethane on here and let it dry. Okay, that's looking pretty legit. We're gonna let this dry, and then we're gonna put some urethane on it tomorrow morning. Okay, it's the next day here. I am using the fast drying polyurethane clear semi-gloss, and we're gonna put on our glasses right quick and just pop this open. There we go. Okay, I am using a Wooster brush right here. This is a high quality brush. You don't have to use one of these. I just really like them. And we're just gonna dip in here and prime our brush. Okay, and here we go. We're gonna start with the top. We just wanna do a good, nice, even coat. Okay, this is starting to look really nice. Just wait until this dries. This is gonna look absolutely fantastic. Okay, we are finished here. I'm gonna let this set. This urethane is gonna bring out the real color of this and make it shiny. And it's gonna look really cool once it's dried. You guys ready? Here we go. Look at that. This turned out great. I absolutely love the stain right here and the urethane we put across there just gave it a nice gloss. Now for comparison, 
here is the one I messed up right here. You can, I don't know if you guys can see that bear. I try to recover from that mistake, but it wasn't happening. So anyway, you can tell the, see the differences here in the, the color of the two. Sometimes I'll leave the wood plain, but I think this really needed some stain and I love the color of this red oak right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you got a lot out of this video. Now, like I said, you can pick up this template below in the links at howtowoodcarve.com. This small purchase right here will go and help support the website as well as the channel right here. And you guys can take this template and use it however you would like. So I appreciate you watching guys. Go out and be creative. I'll see you next time. Don't show that. <laughs>